Okay, so today I'm going to help you guys out with the Entertainment Center project a little bit. Um, some students have had some issues, and so I just want to kind of touch base on a good way to get a good start on the project so you don't have problems later on down the line. And so um, what I recommend is as you're working on this project, um, you really have to keep that sketch uh, that we the sketch that I showed you in the example is really important to help keep yourself organized and on track. The other thing that I think is really important too is that you try not to skip ahead and I'll show you kind of some where these steps are um, that students are trying to skip ahead and it's actually costing them quite a bit of time actually in the end because they're trying to take shortcuts through the project. Um, so we'll kind of show you or walk you through that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, the dimensions, which I've just wrote down a few. Um, something I just want to make sure you guys understand is number one, um, I'm not going to put all the objects um, that are on the list um, in this um, example presentation just because of time. I want to try to keep the video as short as I can. The other thing is the dimensions. I have some dimensions for the videos uh, or for the current project. Um, the project could be changing um, depending next year. Maybe we're going to go with a different size objects. So make sure that um, you're not just copying this video uh, straight because um, some of the stuff might not add up. And so, like I said, it's more of the process of how we do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to on shape. I'm going to start a new document and I'm going to call it Entertainment Center um, and that takes me to here. Um, and so when you jump in, you will be sitting here at the Part Studio One. Um, that's where it default jumps into on shape. And so what I'm going to do or what I recommend you doing is going to that list of things that have to be in the Entertainment Center. Um, there were cubes, there were sound bars, TVs, all that other stuff. What I recommend you doing is in here, um, go to just a sketch um, on the front plane. I change my camera so it's a dead-on front view. And then what I do is I just grab the square tool and start drawing all those shapes that are on that list. Now, some of them have like quantity of four. If that's the case, draw four squares that are that size. Um, now, again, you guys hopefully have kind of grabbed a piece of paper and kind of sketched out where you kind of want things. Um, this process that I'm showing you now is really going to show you how to kind of um, dial everything in a little bit better. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw a square. The first thing I'm going to draw here is the video game uh, thing, which I see that it is 4.5 inches wide. It is 16 inches tall. Now, I'm not going to put in a depth because we are just working two dimensionally right now. We are not concerned how far back into the wall this goes. That's the next step. But we're just trying to get the layout kind of buttoned down and figured out. So I'm just going to come in here and keep drawing. The charger is um, seven wide. It is six tall. I'm going to draw another square. Um, this is the sound bar. So it is 48 inches wide and it is 2.5 inches tall. Now, I'm really not concerned about where these are right now. I'm just kind of spreading them out. The only thing is, is make sure when you draw these that like the bottom of the line doesn't happen to lock onto a line of another object off to the side. So I'm trying to make them so they're a little bit apart from each other because you guys know Onshape likes to latch things together. I don't want like the bottom line of this to be latched onto the bottom line of that. Um, not yet anyway. So if that happens, the best advice I can give you is probably just delete the square and redraw it. It's actually, I think, a lot faster than trying to get rid of the constraints that are there um, because we're just drawing rectangles. It's super easy. So the cube is 13.5 by 13.5. And then I got another one here. Um, the speaker is nine wide and it is 15.5 tall. So now that I have all of these squares drawn, okay, I'm going to go ahead and start dragging these into the positions that I want them to be. Now, the goal of this is to give a three-quarter inch gap between the different um, objects that are there. That three-quarters of an inch is representing the plywood or the lumber that you're going to use to build this entertainment center. Now, we're really just concerned with the inside of the entertainment center at this time. Now, the entertainment center has to be a rectangular or square size. 
you can't have something just sticking out into space. So it needs to be basically built like a normal type of entertainment center as a part of this project. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start putting this together so I can show you what I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit escape because I don't want to draw any more rectangles. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the corners of these. Now you can see already um, when I drew that last square, it latched itself onto that cube. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this guy. It's this uh, nine by 15 and a half. I'm just going to delete him, drop in another one, nine by 15 and a half. And you can see it's pretty quick. Like I said, then it's not latched onto that. So now I can hit escape, go back. And like I said, I'm going to sit here and get this kind of organized how I have my, um, my little sketch or my little doodle that I did on paper and pencil. So that's what I'm doing right now is just kind of getting some of this stuff organized. Okay. Um, so maybe we have something like this. Um, and then I also, let's just, uh, we'll just let this go. So um, like I said before, this is not near as many objects as needs to fit in your entertainment center. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to just show this. So let's say this is what I have on paper. Okay. It looks pretty good. I've got this huge hole right here of nothingness. So I'm going to need to address that, which I will address here pretty quick. But I want to go ahead and start on this stuff first. So the stuff that I know is going to fit, I'm going to go ahead and hit dimension. I'm going to put like the cube and this 0.75 apart. That is the plywood that would go across that shelf. So I can come in here and all of these could be changed to 0.75 because that is where a board would come across the top. Now, I keep working my way through. Now, over here, I'm going to definitely want this line to line up with this line here. Okay, so I will click there, dimension, click here with the dimension, and I'm just going to change this number to a zero. When I put a zero in, that lines up all those lines. Now, from here, I'm just going to kind of compress everything together. All of the squares that I have drawn need to be three quarters of an inch apart. So I'm going to come here, move this over, and 0.75. Okay, so now it slides over. Now you can kind of see how this is taking shape. So this would also be a piece of plywood right here that would keep those two things divided. I'm going to come over here and make this three quarter as well. So you can kind of see how this is going. Now, I need to start to address some things because some of this isn't going to work quite right. Um, I can definitely move this guy over a little bit um, and line him up with the edge here. So what I'm going to do is just do a dimension from there to there. And I'm just going to make this dimension a zero because that will line them all together. Now, again, I'm going to get this in here, 0.75. And that's pretty much the extent of what I can do at this point. Okay. Now what I need to do is to start stretching things larger to fill the space, okay? I, I cannot just leave this massive nothingness here. I have to do something with it. Now, I told you guys in the instructions you cannot make things smaller, but you can always make things bigger. So, for instance, if I look over here at this cube, you can see that I have nothingness down below here. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is... I'm going to get rid of this 13.5 dimension that's here because that will lock that in so I can't move this square. So I'm going to delete that out. Then what I'm going to do is do a dimension tool and go from here to there. Oops, sorry, wrong button. I'm going to go from, okay, from here to here. And I'm going to make that zero. Now, because I got rid of that 13.5, that allows the, the box or the cube to grow up to fill in that space. And because I went zero there, I know that the bottom of these are all in line. Now, I'm sitting here looking at this space right here, and I'm wondering, well, what can I do with it? I got a couple options. I could spread this guy and make him taller, or I could come across with this guy and just stretch him widthwise. Now, just looking at it, I kind of decided that widthwise is what I want to do. So again, kind of like with what I did with the cube, I'm going to grab this side and I'm going to stretch that off to the right and have it be three quarters of an inch away from here. Before I do that, though, I have got to get rid of this dimension, the seven, because I can't stretch him unless I get rid of that seven because you would override the other measurement.
So now I can go here, come from here to here, and make that 0.75. So now all I did was stretch that compartment out. Now you can see where this plywood is all kind of starting to come together. Now I've got this huge space down here that I don't know what to do with. What I would probably do in something like this is I get all my important stuff fit, okay? So let's say I've gotten all my objects on my list fit in there, everything works great. I still have this huge hole of nothing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a square here, okay? And I'm just gonna fill this with a storage compartment. Cause like I said, what I gave you on Google Classroom or Canvas is the bare minimum. You can put in more compartments and more storage. So I can just put that in as a 0.75. I can go here for 0.75. And I can start to stretch this out. And then this down to the bottom would be, of course, zero. Now, I found a problem here because this is too tall. Now, this compartment worked great. That's fine. Okay. But you can see that now all of a sudden this one compartment does stick down lower than the rest. So I do need to go back and change these so that all of these line up with the bottom of this. So that's not a big deal. I can come in here, delete my height, okay? And I'm just gonna do a dimension from here to here. Oops, missed it. Um, sorry, uh, do a dimension from here to here, make that zero. Okay. And you can see that because I left all my other zeros in here, it just pulled everything down at once. So now you can see I've got my boards that are in between all these um, compartments. Now I've got the middle done, but I don't have like a top and sides. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab a square. And I'm just going to draw a quick square around the whole thing. Now, again, the inside of this is done. I, all that's left is doing the outside. So this is the last thing I do with this sketch. Now, again, all of this stuff is in one sketch. I did not click check. I stayed in one sketch. You can see that over here. That, that is extremely important. You cannot do this in separate sketches. It won't work. So now what I'm going to do now that I have this box drawn, I'm just going to come in here, do a dimension. I'm going to go from here to here. 0.75, and I'm just putting a 0.75 perimeter around the entertainment center, and that will serve as the sides, the bottom, and the top of the entertainment center. There. Now that I have that done, you can see this entertainment is starting to take shape. So now you can see that there would be a top, sides, bottom, shelves, dividers, all that kind of stuff. Before I go any further though, and I'm still in my sketch one, I do need to kind of go in and separate where boards are. So for instance, I guess what I'm trying to say is like here, when I zoom in and look, you can see that the boards go like this, okay? But does this board come all the way up to here and break this board going across like a piece here and a piece here? Or does this board end at a certain spot and this shelf just goes the entire way across. That's something we do need to indicate before we start to make parts because we need to know how long these parts are. The way that I do this is I use a line command. And for instance, let's look at the top. Um, I'll come over here and look at the top. Now the top, do we want the top to go the entire way across the top all the way to the end like this? So now this is the top all the way through. Or do we want the top to end and have the sides come up like this? Okay, so basically, do you want it this way or this way? Now, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. Actually, in this instance, you're talking an inch and a half, it would throw things off. And that's going to be a big deal when you try to assemble this when all the parts don't fit together. So now I don't really care how you do this. The only advice I give you is the longer you can keep boards, the less parts you're going to have. So that's kind of a big thing for me. So I'm going to click here. Um, I'm going to have it go all the way to the end. Okay. And I'm going to come over here and do the same to this guy. And then basically what I do is I go through my project and just figure out where I want these breaks. So like here, like I said, I could draw a line here and draw a line here. 
and then I would have one, two, three parts here. I think it's easier just to break this like that and have this side go the whole way down. And then the shelf just goes into the side. Okay. So I keep making all these parts. The other thing I'm kind of thinking at the same time is if I can keep parts the same size, I only have to draw one of them instead of two or three or four of them. So I'm kind of also in my head kind of keeping the same size. That's why I did the top so it went the whole way across. And then the bottom, I'm doing the exact same way because I then only have to make the top and the top would work for the top and the bottom together. So I go through my entire project just putting in these little lines um, to separate where the boards are and to can indicate where the joint wood joint would be. So I just put all these in and that should be about it. Now, like I said, your project will be a little bit bigger. Um, so you might have more um, and I probably missed some here. Um, but this is basically what you do. Now I've indicated how long each of these boards are. So I can look at this shelf and see that this shelf right here, okay, I know it starts right here and it ends right here. That's the goal of putting in those little lines and making this whole um, object. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next part. Now we're gonna start making the parts. This does not get extruded. This sketch just gets left alone. I need this sketch to pull measurements, okay? Now, the entertainment center, the way that I have it set up is that you guys will make the entertainment center 13 and a half inches deep. So everybody will make theirs the same depth. Now, the other thing is all the boards are gonna be three quarters of an inch thick. So basically what that means is when you're making these parts, I am giving you two parts already for free. The only thing you change is the length of the boards. That's the only thing that you're actually going after in this sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making parts. Now let's start with the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit plus. I'm going to create a part studio. Okay. I'm going to go sketch front, um, grab a rectangle tool. Okay. And I'm just going to start drawing a rectangle. Now, I'm going to jump back to my sketch over here, okay? And I'm going to look at the top's length, okay? So, the top goes from here to down here, which makes it 49.5 inches tall. So, I go back to my part, okay? And I'm going to make this right here. 49.5 inches tall, okay? And then the width or the next number you put in is gonna be that 13.5. That's whatever the width of the entertainment center is. So you can see there's my 49.5 by 13 and a half. I can date extrude. Again, that extrusion amount is gonna be 0.75 because all the plywood is three quarters of an inch thick. I hit check. This part is done. So now this is services the top or bottom of the entertainment center. I do want to help keep track of this stuff. So I'm going to rename this tab um, where it says part studio two. I'm going to right click that and go rename. And I'm going to call this the top slash bottom. Again, that's just easier for me to remember when I go to do the assembly so I can look at the tabs and say, yep, that's a side. That's a divider. That's for this. Um, if you don't do that, you're going to have a bunch of parts studio, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's going to be tough to keep track of stuff. So I think it's well worth your time to rename them. So now let's go ahead and look at the side. So the side of this, like I said, the top went all the way to the end. So I'm just going to grab a dimension tool, click here because it goes there and it comes down to there. So that dimension is 19.25 inches. So I hit plus. Create part studio, do a square, start a sketch, square, 19.25 by, that was the dimension I just pulled, by 13.5. That's the dimension I give you. And then I just hit extrude, and that goes 0.75. I hit check, and now that part is done. I can rename this, and I'm just going to call this the side. Now I can go back to my 
drawing over here and grab my next part. And so what you're going to do is you're going to keep grabbing all of these parts and building each individual part for this project. Now, once you get all the parts made, you can actually start making the assembly. Now, that's another video. Um, it also will cover offsets and things like that. Um, so I'm hoping this video helped all of you out. Um, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you ask one of us. Um, thanks. Talk to you later.